what can we do to reverse global warming? Become aware of the solutions and think about the actions you can take as you listen to how we are drawing down in Pennsylvania. As the human energy usage continues to increase for heating and cooling, especially in the urban environments, it becomes a significant source of greenhouse gas emissions. The surge in the number of and population density in existing cities triggers the inefficient design of buildings and infrastructure. Nonetheless, cities are becoming regenerative to the environment and human well-being, especially with the adaptation of green roofs and net zero buildings. With the increase in height and number of buildings, green roofs have become an environmentally friendly alternative to its barren counterpart on new and existing structures. According to Project Drawdown, green roofs mitigate carbon emissions by reducing fossil fuel use in heating and cooling. This is Gene Weber, the founder and owner of Philadelphia Green Roofs LLC, here to explain what green roofs are and their benefits. A green roof is essentially a garden on top of a flat roof or a nearly flat roof, except that it's not a garden at all. It's completely artificial and it's made to mimic a mountain environment and to soak up stormwater with specialized soil media. So the most important thing is this amazing soil media that holds on to so much water. It can capture an inch and a half of rainfall in about four inches of soil media and it stays wet for we don't even know how long, starting some testing with some irrigation entrepreneurs so we can see how long the moisture lasts. But it seems to be one half inch will stay in that soil for a good week and a half, which is a really long time. Because the rooftops are sometimes unable to structurally support the vegetation, some caution must be used in selecting the materials. So if you have an organic roof made out of modified bitumen or asphalt or another organic substance from petroleum products, then you need a root barrier because it is organic and a tree, if it actually is on a roof that's not been tended, it could penetrate the membrane and penetrate the roof with its strong desire to get to a place where it can get more water. The plants are almost always sedums in the Northeast and the Midwest. I can't say what they have in California or Florida. It's a completely different setup, but they're sedums. And sedums are mostly from the Caucasus Mountains and are adapted to living with no organic material, pretty much, and rocky soil. And I say rocks. It's not soil as we know it. We make it a little easier for them on the green roof because the kind of soil profile has to have a lot of fines in it. So I guess it's more comfortable, but it does drain very freely, which the sedum needs. So the sedum are chosen not because they take up water well, but because they can live for so long without rainfall. And they'll shrink down to a tiny, tiny nub. You won't think there's anything there. It loses its leaves, its roots, its extra stems, and it just waits patiently for some rain. And within an hour of rainfall, it actually will start growing roots again and coming back. Due to the recent increase in rainfall, green roofs insulation can have great benefits, especially when it comes to storm water management. Last year, we had 195% of normal rainfall in Phoenixville and 175% of normal rainfall in Philadelphia. So instead of 42 inches, Philadelphia got 66 inches and Phoenixville, instead of 42 inches, we got 82 inches, calendar year of 2018. The reason we do green roofs here is for stormwater management. And so because it's a growing thing, it's green stormwater management instead of gray, which is pipes and cisterns and things that need to be cleaned out and don't last forever. We expect that a green roof will last we say 45 years, they're lasting 90 years in Germany and we only don't know how long they last because they haven't been planted for that long. 
not that way. I mean, they've been thatched roofs for since time began, I'm sure, but the kind of green roof that we're doing, which is an artificial environment with a drainage mat and then soil media and then plants, that's really just 60 years old in Germany. And there were some outliers before that. The oldest one in this country, I think, is Rockefeller Center. And that wasn't done with soil media. That was done just putting a garden on top of a very substantial roof. Another project drawdown solution to increase building sufficiency is the construction of net zero homes, as explained by Keir de Grand Cham, the founder and head of construction of high performance homes. Net zero home is a, a vernacular that is actually accepted by the World Green Building Council as a low carbon footprint, high performing house. What I really do is it's called a zero energy ready house, which means that the house has the ability to produce more electricity than it consumes, thus offsetting all or most of your energy costs. I would like to kind of give you a rundown on how we get to a net zero because it's important that the people who are backing me as far as the manufacturers that I've carried with me with my success, I use a superior wall which not just a vernacular, it's the name of the company. And it gives me the ability to have an R21.3 with a very consistent product. I use a SIP panel, which is a structurally insulated panel system. I purchased through Chris Bloom at Muris, and I can't say enough about how professional they are and how the repetitive predictable results have a lot to do with them. And then I do an awful lot of insulation and air sealing. I use a DeVere insulation down in Maryland, and they are a continuing aid to our success as well. You put these packages together with the right subs that I use, and if we just do it in the proper sequence with the proper quality control, then you end up with a fantastic home that people will have for generations. Despite the differences between how conventional houses and zero energy ready houses are built, they remain similar in maintenance. You don't have to do anything different. There is no one system that is reliant upon another one. It's still going to act like a house. If the HVAC goes out in your existing normal house, the same thing as it goes out here. We use the geothermal system that we prefer, so we're kind of hedging a bet that it's not going to break down for a long time because there's very little moving parts. As far as the insulation, the SIPs, and everything else, that doesn't degradate. That doesn't break down. That has lifetime warranties on just about everything across the board. As far as the interior and exterior products, it looks exactly like a regular house. I use anywhere from vinyl siding to hardy plank to stone, stucco, eaves, brick. Actually, I can use any exterior product and still maintain the same thing. The thermal envelope is just that. It's just outside the wall. It's not the cladding itself. And on the inside, I do a few things different, but nothing that you have to maintenance or nothing you have to adjust. And it's drywall or plaster, whatever you want on the inside of your house. These houses are smart homes. So they have the ability to look at your camera and open your doors and turn on your lights and turn up the HVAC and turn it down and other items that we can do, leak sensors. But you can also see the house will give you a daily report of circuit by circuit, how the house is performing, how much it's producing, how much it's consuming. You're going to have a circuit on your, or a tester on your circuit for the refrigerator, and it'll tell you that's performing perfectly for two years. Suddenly it's drawing more energy. Well, that means the refrigerator is sick. It needs to be cleaned or it needs to be replaced. So the house actually helps you help itself, tells you these things. Mr. DeGrant Cham and High Performance Homes are building zero energy ready house throughout Pennsylvania as demands increase. Within Philadelphia, Ms. Weber shares the type of clients that come to her seeking a green roof along with some of the economic and environmental benefits and challenges. Well, there's two kinds of clients. There's residential clients, and they are trying to do something for the greater good, as well as have something cool on the rooftop. My main clients are developers who are complying with the Philadelphia Water Department's stormwater management regulations which they enacted because the EPA has a consent agreement against us and every large city in the U.S. with combined sewer overflow, which means that our stormwater sewers 
when they get filled, they empty into the sanitary sewers and they're already full. And so untreated sewage goes into our rivers, the Delaware and Schuylkill right here. And that's actually, the untreated waste is actually more damaging than the chemicals emitted by manufacturers. It's kind of surprising. So the water department has made any parcel that's building new construction that's over 15,000 square feet must keep every drop of the rainwater that falls on that parcel within the parcel. They were scheduled to go down to 5,000 square footprints, but that was in 2015 and I don't know when they'll do it, if ever. Greening, whether it's with detention basins or rain gardens or green roofs or pervious pavement, that's all fallen to developers. Developers are super busy because there's this 10 year tax abatement, which makes it very easy to sell all the housing stock that they build. And I know that from being with the Building Industry Association and hearing their reports. We're finally starting to flatten out, but basically business has been booming. And so we've been building the acreage that the EPA requires, which is 30,000 acres by 2035. That's the deadline and that's the mission. Unfortunately, the water department has only achieved five acres since 2007. With many available grants and programs, green roofs will soon become prevalent. I think 10 years. In the city, the, the developers are finding that the green roof is in a way a better deal, especially if it's a long-term hold. One, because of the green roof tax credit, so they can get up to $100,000 back on the cost of the green roof and the roofing membrane, which they had to have anyway. Then there's the SMIP grant, Stormwater Management Incentive Program. There's also GARP, which is aggregated groups of properties, and I've not done one, so I can't really speak to that. So 7,500 square foot green roof was free. That was pretty significant. So with these incentives, more and more people are doing it. There's word of mouth going around. And the developers who've done a green roof, because there was no place on the property to put any other kind of stormwater management, SMP, they found that the green roof is a good thing. They never have to re-roof, so far as they know. We say that it will double the life of your roof. I tentatively would say it triples the life of your roof. The roof's never exposed to the sun or the temperature changes that are so extreme in the summer and the winter, extremes of those seasons. So, like I said before, we don't even know how long a roof will last covered by a green roof. And in Germany, the translation is actually called roof protection layer, one of their words for green roofs. In order to popularize zero energy ready homes, it is crucial to make the price of construction comparable to the conventional homes as explained by Mr. DeGrant Cham. One of our biggest questions, does it cost more? On a small home, like a thousand to 1500 square foot, you know, which some people say small, some people don't, but thousand to 1500 square foot with the fact that we use photovoltaics, we use certain heat solar shingles, geothermal energy, and a lot of insulation, it does cost more than a conventionally built house, probably five to 10% more. But the fact that you'll never have an electric bill that offsets you quite comfortably, quite quickly. They also have tax credits that are still available through the 5695 program, which gives you 30% of what you put into the home with the geothermal and the solar. And so you get a big chunk of change back. Now, when you start getting to bigger homes, like 2,500, 3,000 square feet, it doesn't cost anything more than a regular builder. The reason being, we're building the house so tight that I don't need an excessive amount of HVAC systems. Now, we've got 5,000 square foot houses that use 1.6 to 2 tons of HVAC, where a conventionally built house usually would require 5 to 7 to 8 tons in all kinds of different zones. Well, they're buying multiple units. I'm buying one. So that kind of equals the playing field at that point in time. So long story short, we had a case study done on our old model back in 2015 by Dow. And they said that that home, which was over 6,000 square foot, would save about $230,000 in 30 years of the mortgage. So it's actually cheaper in the long run and just a little bit more money up front, but it's worth it. The increase in demand is becoming more prevalent as people are understanding it 
and believing in it because five, ten years ago, it was you know, a little bit of a unicorn. It was a myth. Now we have proven that we've got a track record and we're doing it time and time again. So that's something that's given people a lot of comfort. As far as people wanting it, honestly, from the delivery drivers that drop off the material to the homeowners, the neighbors, once they understand what we're building here, and it looks exactly like a regular house. It's not just some boring box. It's a beautiful home that we build and have the realization that they're not going to have an electric bill or they're going to have an electric bill that's you know, manageable, $20 a month, $30 a month for a fairly good sized house, five, 6,000 square feet. Everybody wants it. So it is becoming more and more popular. And it's my understanding federally mandated. This will be what is going to be the status quo and the norm come 2030. 2025, a couple states are already adapting this, which will be, I think, California and Delaware. Most people who come to us have heard that we have the ability to do a net zero. So that's their first interest. We did have a couple that we just finished a house that came in for health concerns. And the byproduct of building a net zero home is the fact that the house is very, very tight, requires a very low load to make the house comfortable. And thus we can control the HVAC and the indoor air quality so that we can make it just about like a hospital-like environment. So it's benefits a borrower beyond what I had hoped as far as just having a low energy bill, low to no. It is an extremely healthy home if you suffer from allergies or COPD or something. These homes will actually help you live more comfortably. There are also challenges associated with green roofs, such as the insurance and price, as shared by Ms. Weber. The green roof doesn't make sense to most people, and it doesn't make sense to insurers either. I would say that residential green roof customers may find it difficult to find a home insurer because putting a wet, heavy thing on a roof scares the insurance industry. And it's actually been difficult for green roof contractors to get insurance companies who don't drop them or charge an enormous amount, which they do. I actually pay more in insurance than my doctor. Well, for a private resident, it's, it's very, very cost prohibitive. It probably starts at about $25 a square foot and goes up to 50. And that's only because there's no economy of scale and the mobilization costs and the delivery costs and the materials are all really expensive. But if I'm doing a building that's 8,000 square feet, I can easily get to $10 a square foot. And there's a lot of incentive for business to do this because they can, if they're in an existing building, they can get the green roof for free between the Philadelphia tax credit on business income and receipts tax. Credit lasts as long as the money that they've been granted runs out. So if it takes one year or it takes 20 years, it's still their money and they don't have to pay that tax for that amount of money till that runs out. The benefits from the drawdown solutions of green roofs and zero-energy ready houses are not always visible. But Mr. DeGrant Champ ensures us that looks can be deceiving. Listen to him describe what is it like to look at a zero-energy ready house in Pennsylvania. Look around. This is a beautiful home. It looks like any, every other home, but it's not. It's what you can't see. It's what's behind the walls. Thanks for listening. This is Anna from Penn State Brandywine.